Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of good wishes to the UAE President His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan on his country's 47th National Day. His Majesty the King extended congratulations to the UAE leader, wishing him abundant health and happiness and his people further progress and prosperity. He commended the deep rooted, fraternal, and outstanding relations binding the two brotherly countries and people. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of condolences to the U.S. President Donald Trump on the demise of the 41st U.S. President George H.W. Bush. His Majesty hailed the efforts of the deceased in enhancing bilateral relations. His Majesty extended his condolences to his family and prayed for his soul to rest in peace. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of condolences to former U.S. President George W. Bush on the demise of his father, the 41st U.S. President George H. W. Bush. His Majesty hailed the efforts of the deceased in enhancing the bilateral relations. His Majesty the King noted the noble stances of the late president that enhanced relations linking the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States of America. His Majesty also extended his condolences to his family and prayed for his soul to rest in peace. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, congratulated the UAE President, His Highness, Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, on his country's 47th National Day, in which he extended good wishes to the UAE leader, wishing him abundant health and happiness and his people further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness hailed the deep-rooted fraternal and outstanding relations binding the two brotherly countries and people. His Royal Highness also sent a congratulatory cable to the Vice President, Prime Minister and Dubai ruler Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum and to Abu Dhabi Crown Prince and UAE Deputy Supreme Commander Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. His Royal Highness the Premier also extended cables of congratulations to the UAE Federal Supreme Council members, Emirates rulers and Crown Princes. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan on his country's 47th National Day, in which he extended good wishes to him, wishing him abundant health and happiness and his people further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness hailed the deep-rooted and fraternal and outstanding relations binding the two brotherly countries and people. His Royal Highness also sent congratulatory cables to the Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and to Abu Dhabi Crown Prince and UAE Deputy Supreme Commander, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince has also extended cables of congratulations to the UAE Federal Supreme Council members, Emirates rulers and Crown Princes. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a caber of condolences to the U.S. President Donald Trump on the demise of the 41st U.S. President George H.W. Bush. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince hailed the efforts of the deceased in enhancing bilateral relations. His Royal Highness extended his condolences to his family and prayed for his soul to rest in peace. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of condolences to former U.S. President George W. Bush on the demise of his father, the 41st U.S. President George H.W. Bush. His Royal Highness hailed the efforts of the deceased in enhancing bilateral relations. His Royal Highness extended his condolences to his family and prayed for his soul to rest in peace. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity, Youth, uh, Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, congratulated the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, marking Bahrain's Women's Day, affirming that Her Royal Highness's support for Bahraini women contributed to the distinguished presence of many women personalities in the kingdom. His Highness Sheikh Nasser said that fam Bahraini women have succeeded in the legislative and municipal areas and their participation has been successful over the past years thanks to the support of the wise leadership to Bahraini women. His Highness said that Bahraini women have succeeded in proving that their determination and superiority in many locations and have held high positions which proves their efficiency. He affirmed Bahrain's pride in the presence of a number of female figures with many contributions in the development process in the kingdom. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa expressed 
his wishes for the success of Bahraini women in various fields in order to achieve women's rights and to make every effort to assume all their responsibility to serve Bahrain. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of the West Asian Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, congratulated uh, the, Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, and president of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, on the occasion of Bahraini Women's Day, which coincides with the 1st of December. His Highness Sheikh Khalid expressed pride in the successes and participation of Bahraini women in the field of sustainable development. He noted that the reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has had an important role in supporting and enabling women to play their true role in society in all fields to contribute to the development of the kingdom. His Highness added that the Bahraini women have been able to prove their abilities in the legislative and municipal work and has also been able to assume leading positions that have contributed to supporting the civilizational achievements of Bahrain. His Highness affirmed the leading role of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika and her directives to launch programs and plans that develop women's capabilities in all sectors. His Highness wished the Bahraini woman success in achieving further progress and prosperity for the kingdom during the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. In the presence of the Deputy Chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club held the fifth race meeting of the season yesterday at the race course in Rafah Sakhir for the Cups of the Babco Bahrain Olympic Committee and Credimax. Also present at the race were Sheikh Sultan Din bin Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa, Sheikh Hamad bin Abdullah bin Isa Al Khalifa, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid bin Isa Al Khalifa, Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali bin Isa Al Khalifa, Sheikh Nadir bin Mohammed bin Salman Al Khalifa, and horse racing fans. At the end of the race, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received Credit Max Cup from Credit Max Chief Executive Officer Yusuf Ali Mirza. Sheikh Haya bin Abdulaziz Al Khalifa presented Bahrain Olympic Committee Cup to trainer Paul Smith, and the Babco Deputy Chief Executive Ibrahim Talib presented Babco Cups to Sheikh Salman bin Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and Hadi Al Afu.
Representatives Council Speaker Advisor Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah affirmed that the second round of parliamentary and municipal elections 2018 reflects the Bahraini society's keenness to contribute to the democratic process of the kingdom and defend its gains. He added that it also shows the citizens' loyalty to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, who laid the foundations of democracy in the kingdom. The representative speaker noted that the elections coincide with Bahraini Women's Day, which celebrates women in the legislative and municipal field. Shura Council Chairman Mr. Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh asserted that the people of Bahrain made a new democratic achievement expressing their loyalty to the kingdom through their keenness on par practicing their constitutional right and participating in the second round of the parliamentary and municipal elections 2018. Mr. Al Saleh noted that the outstanding democratic environment of the kingdom reflected the awareness of the people of Bahrain of their role in the development of the political life through the high turnout of voting. He also said that the keenness of the citizens to cast their ballots in the second round of the elections is another national achievement in the democratic process led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and implemented by the government according to comprehensive plans and strategies under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Mr. Al Saleh underscored that the sincere national efforts exerted by the higher committee to oversee the integrity of elections have greatly contributed in the smoothness of the electoral process at all polling stations and ballot sorting centers. Meanwhile, he expressed confidence that the winners of the 2018 elections will bind on the achievements and successes of the previous uh, four legislative terms to bolster the democratic process. He affirmed that the legislative authority will remain a main pillar and key to the development march of the kingdom. Bahraini voters went to the polls uh, to cast their ballots in the second round of the 2018 elections to choose their representatives in the municipal councils and council of representatives in its fifth session. These parliamentary and municipal elections come after active uh, campaigns during which new figures were recorded for the number of candidates. The elections executive committee announced the possibility of the voters to vote through subcommittees according to the constituency where they reside and the possibility of voting in the 14 general polling centers. Voters are not required to vote in a polling center within their constituency. The committee also noted that the provision of transportation for voters uh, to the polling stations in light of its keenness to enable citizens to exercise their constitutional right. The people uh, have voted last Saturday and may, made their voices heard with a percentage of 67% of the voters eligible to cast their ballots. Only nine candidates in the parliamentary elections won in the first round of the elections last week and the competition is still strong today for the remaining 31 seats of the Council of Representatives. Meanwhile, in the municipal elections, five uh, has been elected or have been elected across the kingdom's governors and two won uncontested. Therefore, there is still competition for the remaining 23 seats in the municipal councils in the Maharag Northern and Southern governors. The vote opened today at 8 a.m. and ends at 8 p.m. And in regard to the participation of women, we now join our correspondent Hiba Abdel Ghaffar, who is reporting from the Northern Governorate. Hello, Hiba. You are in the biggest governorate in terms of the number of voters. How is the participation going? Yes, we are. Uh, we have 126,000 voters. 62,000 of them are women, since you uh, mentioned women. Um, from what I've seen here since the early morning and uh, last Saturday, 67% uh, uh, of the population uh, contributing in, in this politi political process is uh, not uh, a little number. Uh, this says a lot. Uh, people truly believe uh, in the reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, which wrote about numerous uh, changes in the political and social field. Uh, it opened new horizons and uh, truly uh, released the latent energy of the citizens. They really want to be here. They really want to participate. And it's not only about participation. I always want to highlight awareness. People here speaking about the candidates, speaking about their plans, speaking about KPIs. Uh, this is unbelievable. The level of awareness is uh, amazing. People even are talking about how they will evaluate the candidates uh, after uh, they win. 
uh, they, all, they also say that uh, the competition is very fierce and the choice was really hard because candidates have uh, very solid plans uh, on how to convey uh, the voices and dreams of people. So what I've seen here uh, of participation of women and men, the elderly, uh, people with difficulties, people with special needs uh, who uh, come here to fulfill their national duty, although it might be difficult for them. And of course, the organizers uh, making it a, an easy process for them and helping them every step of the way. Even people uh, who came to vote for the first time uh, this uh, today and uh, last Saturday, our organizers were helping them uh, to be familiar with the balloting process. Uh, actually, every uh, one here played his role uh, very professionally. Whether the organizers in facilitating this balloting process to be that smooth, the judge supervising everything perfectly, he did not sit. Uh, even uh, the monitors supervising everything very professionally and uh, very neutrally without expressing any opinions or any differentiation. Uh, everything is just, even media, uh, the coverage uh, is, is just uh, great. You find people from newspapers here just looking at the voters and maybe counting uh, who is in and who is out. So uh, I think that uh, this is uh, truly a national celebration and um, I congratulate Bahrain for this. And it's coinciding with uh, Bahraini Women's Day uh, is another uh, celebration uh, of women uh, here participating and I'd also like to uh, um, highlight the participation of youth uh, not only as voters this year but also as organizers uh, those organizers are uh, youth who volunteered uh, to be part of this uh, process uh, also as candidates uh, who uh, took the step and had uh, the courage uh, to represent the people so I congratulate Bahrain for this now uh, we are uh, almost half an hour until uh, it uh, becomes 8 p.m. and uh, uh, the balloting process ends, uh, the ballot boxes uh, get uh, sealed and then we start uh, the vote counting uh, process. Great. That's all for now, Saro. Do you have any great, questions? Thank you. Thank, great, thank you very much. That was our correspondent from the Northern Government, Hiba Abdel Ghaffar. And moving to our correspondent, Yasmin Ibrahim, from Mum al Hassam School polling station at the Capital Governorate. The Capital Governorate does not have municipal elections. Tell us uh, about the participation there in the parliamentary elections, Yasmin, and how is the organization of the polling station? Hi, Sarah. So the people of Bahrain have sent a strong message to the world affirming their ability to assume their national responsibilities and ensure more achievements um, with a huge participation of citizens at the polling stations. This only reflects the kingdom's sense of responsibility, um, national spirit and their love to the kingdom. And joining me right now is the judge, Mr. Mohammed Al Maouda. Uh, Mr. Mohammed, can you share with us um, today's overall output of the voting session? Uh, good evening. Uh, actually, as you know, uh, today is the second round of the Bahraini elections. Uh, it's been a very busy day. Uh, participants have been approaching the polling station since 8 a.m. in the morning. We have uh, less than an hour to go. Um, uh, thank God we haven't faced any breaches. Um, actually, uh, we will start closing the polling station at 8 p.m. And after that, we will start uh, counting the votes manually uh, under our inspection as a judicial authority. And uh, after that, uh, the initial uh, uh, results will be uh, issued uh, by us and the final results will be issued by the higher committee. Thank you so much, Mr. Mohammed. And with only less than an hour left until the end of the voting session, as you can see, people are still lining up to cast their ballots. And this only shows us the level of enthusiasm Bahrainis have in um, exercising their constitutional rights. And that is all I have for now. It's back to you at the studio, Sarah. Thank you so much, Yasmin Ibrahim, our correspondent in Umm al-Hassam School. And thank you to your guests as well. We now move to our correspondent, Shogh Mohammed from Aita Town Primary School polling station at the Southern Government. As we are near the end of the vote, what is the atmosphere like in the biggest government in size, Shogh? Thank you, Sara. Things have been crazy here since this morning. So many people have been coming and casting their ballots. You said it yourself, there's less than an hour to go, so people are very eager to get their ballots in. There are people who have uh, been busy all day or people who have been out of Bahrain, so they're trying to get here as fast as they can. 
I'm so surprised by the turnout because there's so many people here towards the end. And today really showcased the diversity of the Bahraini people, the range of people that we have here, the races, the diversity, the people of all nations and people of all cultures coming together. It really shows that people of Bahrain are from different religions and from different races. And everyone is coming here as one community, joining together to show their support and to exercise their democratic rights provided by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. At 8 p.m. sharp, the doors will be closed and votes will be counted manually one by one. And everyone is very anticipating and looking forward to the results. Great. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Shogam Hamad, our correspondent from the Southern Government, Government. Citizens and residents who are eligible to vote in the elections lined up in polling stations today across the kingdom's uh, government to cast their ballots for their candidates in the second round of the 2018 parliamentary and municipal elections. The vote started at 8 o'clock this morning and continues until 8 o'clock in the evening. I think as a Bahraini, we should always voice our opinion if we want the country to go forward. If we do not have a voice, then we cannot complain. So I think it's very important every Bahraini should come, should give a voice, should put the tick mark and should participate actively if we want to go forward. The process was very smooth. Uh, the people who are inside, they were very helpful. It basically took me two minutes to finish the whole thing. Just took my passport, stamped it. I did my, my mark gave up the paper and left, so it was a very smooth and quick process.